Hey, welcome back. I'm really excited to share this news, so I had to do this even though I should definitely be in bed by now. A couple of weeks ago, I put up some offers for Zen. I've been steadily putting these offers up the last two months or so in chunks of a few hundred at a time, with the end goal of accumulating 4,250 Zen for the next time ships in MUDs would go on sale. I was at 3,600 Zen, so I needed just 650 more. I put up an offer for 600 and then another offer the next day for 50 and that Zen just went through today, which just so happens to be the same weekend as a mud sale. I was really expecting to let it go through and then just sit on the Zen for a few months or whenever the next sale was, uh, and I was worried that there was going to be a sale and I'd just miss it, like if my offer went through sometime next week or something and then I'd be stuck waiting forever for the next one. Here you can see my history of Zen purchases as well, so you know I'm not lying. My first offer was on March 31st, and it's now May 5th, so just a little over one month of dilithium exchanged, and even with the Dilex issues, I already have the 4250 that I need. The reason I created this account, and even the reason why I started doing this channel, was because I'm tired of the attitude around the web Reddit and so on, that the problem with PvP is that it's pay to win. Don't get me wrong, PvP has a lot of problems. I think those of us who are PvP regulars and have a really good understanding of the game are painfully aware of the flaws, but there's just so much BS out there spread around by people who have no idea how PvP even works. The problem is, on a Reddit thread or Twitter post, my opinion, as someone who's spent hundreds of hours doing PvP in this game, is weighted the same as any other player who might only play six minutes of PvP a year when the Universal Endeavor comes up. Anyway, I'm not trying to rag on people who just don't understand or don't care or are still learning. Uh, what I find frustrating is the people who don't understand and present themselves and their opinions as if they're experts on the matter. Uh, they might be able to fake it with the general player base, but not with me. That was a bit of a tangent. Uh, what I'm focused on here is that on this character, despite all the dilithium exchange complaints, PvP is dead comments, pay to win comments, and so on, I'll be completely finished an endgame PvP viable build without spending a penny and basically doing nothing more than logging in to do the event campaign stuff every day. So let's dive into the nitty gritty part, what to choose. If I withdraw that last 50 Zen, that puts my balance at 4250, and there's two ships in MUDs that I want to take a look at very closely here. The first is the Rising Corvette. This ship comes with an incredibly important trait for PvP builds, especially those focusing on traditional damage from beam weapons like the Andorian Escort build I've done on this character. Obviously I could have gotten this ship for free from the 2019 Summer Event, but this account didn't exist then. The trade is Rhythmic Rumble, which provides both resistance and a weapon power cost reduction based on the ship's speed. Considering the very high speeds of PvP ships, this can be a huge boost. I've seen weapon power costs reduced to almost nothing, and resistances in the 200 to 300 or even higher range. This trade is activated by using a pilot ability or auxiliary to dampers, so keep that in mind. The second thing I'd get from this ship is the experimental weapon Soliton Wave Impeller, which fires a shield penetrating radiation shot and it fires even faster at high engine power. Yet another thing that synergizes well with a fast moving PvP build. On the other hand, the other ship I want to talk about is the Alachi Kulash Frigate. I have to admit, I'm a bit of a sucker for the Alachi design aesthetic. I love the way this ship looks. It's also a 5-3 weapon layout ship with very good speed, and other than a commander engineering seat, it has all universal seating, one of which is an intel seat. I actually could make a hell of a good build with this ship, and I have before. On top of the great ship itself, it also comes with a universal console, Alachi Rift Jump. This console phases your ship out for 5 seconds, has a passive accuracy buff, and bonus damage when you come back into phase. Even better, it can be activated even while disabled, so this is a good way to deal with the current evade target lock disable bug, at least for the time being. The trade is also very useful, Invasive Maneuvers, which basically does the same thing as Rift Jump, where your ship phases out, but it's activated by Evasive Maneuvers. 
Since I'm using the duty officer that recharges evasive maneuvers, I can use this phase out trick pretty often, which makes it nice for getting out of trouble. It does have a few drawbacks though. You phase in and out twice during its duration, and I know from cutting it too close a few times that you can be killed in between those phases. You also can't fire weapons or use abilities while phased out. Sometimes you might use evasive maneuvers offensively, like to line up an attack run, and this trait basically prevents you from doing that reliably. The last issue is that evasive maneuvers is also grayed out when you get disabled, so this trait won't get you away from evade target lock. I didn't watch the stream, but I hear on 10 forward yesterday that they did acknowledge the problems with the intel abilities, but that they can't work on them until after the new content drop. I totally get that. I wish they'd allotted some time immediately post-release. I mean, I reported the bugs the day of release, so it's not like we're just discovering them, but uh, it's too late now. I'm just glad that they noticed and said something, and I'm sure we'll see those fixes soon. Now, yet another layer to add to this whole thing. I'm more than halfway done the event campaign for this year. I'm not sure exactly how far apart the next two events will be. That basically means within a few months I'll have the campaign prize to choose from as well. I think it's important to plan out a build, PvP or PvE, and not waste time or resources on stuff that you don't need, so my choice of mud ship is also going to reflect my campaign choice. This is a tough one, but I think, ultimately, I'm going to go with the Rising Corvette for Rhythmic Rumble. When the event campaign is done, I'm going to choose the Lobby option, and the first 20% Lobby sale, I'll be able to buy two Lobby ships, probably the Zal Heavy Cruiser and the Zindi Adaleth Dreadnought. That will get me the Invincible trait, as well as Super Weapon Ingenuity, which is the Beam Overload's Extend trait. This pretty much makes the Andorian Beam Escort build I'm working on a complete endgame ready PvP build that can compete with the best of them. I also think that completing and mastering a traditional Beam damage type build will appeal to a larger majority of players and my viewers, especially newer players who might be on a tighter budget or still learning the mechanics of the game. That said, if you're on this channel and you're more interested in control support, healers, and other types of builds, and also faced with the same decision that I am, I think in your case I might lean towards getting the Alachi ship instead. Two more escape abilities to help you be more elusive will end up being more of a threat to the enemy and help keep you alive longer. A lot of this depends on what gear you already have too. Obviously if you did one or both of these events then you already have these ships and you don't have to worry about it. And don't worry, I'll still be doing builds like that, but just keep this in mind like on the free-to-play Scryer build video I posted a week or two ago. Think about how much better that build would be if I also had the Alachi console and the invasive trait on that build. I post these videos with the intention that people will just use the basic concepts behind them and then use whatever cool gear or build ideas they already have and tweak and customize them and make them their own. I have no way of knowing exactly what gear everyone has access to, so I have to be intentionally generic or restricted in some places where you might not have to be. I suppose I'll also start converting Dilithium to Zen again and work towards unlocking the Alachi ship too at some point, but it's gonna take a while. Let's buy this new ship. I'll master it real quick, do a super quick run, and uh, I'll do a quick run of the Andorian build once I'm done. All right. I'm not going to do a whole build video here, I just kind of want to do a roadmap of what it's going to end up being, and I'll do a proper build video at the end of the event campaign on what I've accomplished in total since starting this project. Obviously I've got beam weapons, dual beams in this case, colony consoles for healing, I also have pilot abilities on this ship, so even if I switch from Oxa Dampers back to Oxa Sif, I'll still be triggering Rhythmic. Now for the starship traits because that's the key part that's going to change on this build. Otherwise, everything else is the same as the other video that I did. 
I now have Rhythmic Rumble as the very first trait. This forms the basis of both our damage resistance if the enemy cracks through our temporary hull, as well as drastically increases our damage output as long as we're firing at speed. That leads into the next trait, and thanks to Federation Admiralty on this account's TOS recruit, Superior Pedal to the Metal. This will be 30% bonus all damage as long as we remain at full throttle, which we're going to anyway for Rhythmic. The next one is Cold Hearted, which is a great debuff trait as it lowers the power, slows, and debuffs damage resistance of enemies, and I got this courtesy of an epic Phoenix token, which in theory should be even easier to get now with the Phoenix changes. The next two slots are intentionally blank. This is where Super Weapon Ingenuity, which basically ensures 100% uptime on beam overload, will go. And then Invincible from the Zal Cruiser in the last slot, which provides 8 seconds of increased healing and makes the ship unkillable once every 2 minutes when we're reduced below 5% hull. Some players feel they don't need the Zal trait, so an alternate Lobby ship choice option is to grab the NX Refit Escort, which comes with Preferential Targeting. Preferential Targeting is a 100% Category 1 damage boost to Beam Overload, so you can choose that if you're a more aggressive player. I play very defensively, so that's just my playstyle. Either way, the cost is exactly the same. If you own the 10th Anniversary Bundle, then you already have Preferential Targeting. The very last slot, and thanks to Cryptic for yet another T6X upgrade token, is kind of a free space. I could use superior predictive algorithms once I finish the intel tree. That's 30 more accuracy, and it's a good free option. Another good free one is improved critical systems. Since I'm cycling two emergency power abilities anyway, that's a nice boost for criticals. Since I did the event for the Eisenberg ship, I also have Ingenious Tenacity, which would help heal my shields a bit more, but if anyone missed that event, I don't want them to feel like this is a great trait or anything. It's really not that big of a deal, but it is helpful. Concealed Repairs and Carrier Wave Shield Hacking are two other very good choices available from the exchange. I think I'm going to go with Carrier Wave in this case. Uh, especially on this ship since I have an extra science ability that I'm using tractor beam on anyway. Obviously I'm going to fill those two empty slots for the time being with whatever I feel like I can fit. And tonight is our weekly T6 Arena event on PC and I plan to use this ship in a couple of rounds to try it out with the new trait. It'll only get better with the event campaign traits later on, so I'm really happy to see this build shaping up so well. Oh, and if anyone on PC is interested in joining for some T6 PvP, we do it every week. It's kind of a free-flowing thing at the moment, which I really like. Basically, just go into the uh, Qs tab and then the PvP tab, and queue for this arena solo duo queue. This starts around 4 p.m. Eastern US time, which is 8 p.m. GMT. You don't have to be there right at the start. The last couple of weeks, people have been queuing up for matches for five or six hours straight, so you can drop in whenever you feel like and leave whenever you want to. We're also usually on voice chat in the PvP section of the STO Discord. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video too. Thanks for watching.